Good day everyone. Today we'll talk about the finances of FIFA. So FIFA is the governing body for football and it's based in Lausanne in Switzerland. It produces accounts each year and operates in four-year financial cycles. And each four-year cycle ends in the year of the FIFA World Cup. Its accounts are audited by PwC, PricewaterhouseCoopers, which is one of the world's top auditing companies. FIFA has 211 members. Its members are split into six confederations. Essentially, FIFA has divided the world into six continents, covering Asia, Africa, Europe, Oceania, which is the Australia and New Zealand region, South America and North America. FIFA also has 13 regional associations in Asia, Africa and North America. It employs 813 staff. It has 16 subsidiary companies that manage particular aspects of their operations, such as the FIFA Museum, FIFA Ticketing for the FIFA Tournaments, the FIFA Foundation and so on. FIFA's latest four-year annual report, which covers the period from 2015 to 2018, is available on the FIFA website. And that is the report that I have used as a base for this presentation. So let's have a look at FIFA's revenue and expenses for the four-year period. FIFA had revenues of $6.4 billion. It had expenses of $5.4 billion. It had a surplus before tax of $1 billion in the four-year period. And after taxes and interest income, it had a net surplus of $1.2 billion. Now let's see how that compares with prior periods. So if we look at the four years ending 2010, FIFA had revenues of $4 billion. In the four year period ending 2014, it had revenues of $5.4 billion. And in our period to 2018, it had revenues of $6.4 billion. So you can see that revenues have been increasing quite substantially. And compared to 2010, the current revenues are up 58%. If we look at the expenses, the expenses have increased over the last eight years by 53%, from 3.5 billion in 2010 to 5.4 billion in 2018. The surplus before taxes and interest increased from 557 million to $1 billion, which is an increase of 89%. And the bottom line number, FIFA had a net surplus of 631 million in 2010, which increased to 1.2 billion in 2018, which is an increase of 90%. So financially, FIFA has done extremely well over the last eight years. Let's have a look at FIFA's revenues of 6.4 billion over that four year period. It received $3.1 billion for selling its uh, TV broadcast rights. $1.6 billion for selling its sponsorship and marketing rights, $600 million for licensing, $564 million in ticket sales, basically from the FIFA World Cup, $148 million from hospitality sales, again from the FIFA World Cup, $123 million in revenue from the FIFA Club World Cup, $44 million from the FIFA Quality Program. This is where FIFA basically endorses certain items for sale, such as merchandise and uh, football equipment. It received $25 million from the IOC for Olympic participation, and it had other revenues of $130 million, for example, from the FIFA Museum. So $6.4 billion over the four-year period, which amounts to $4.4 million per day in revenues over a four year period. That's pretty good. And if we look at the revenues of 6.4 billion from um, another direction, we'll see that 
5.4 billion, 83% of that came from the Football World Cup 2018. Out of the TV broadcast revenues of 3.1 billion, almost 3 billion came from the World Cup. 100% of the sponsorship monies came from the World Cup. 96% of the ticketing revenues came from the World Cup and almost 100% of the hospitality came from the World Cup. So you can see that the FIFA World Cup is responsible for a very, very large percentage of FIFA's total revenues. So let's have a look at the expenses of FIFA for the four year period, $5.4 billion. $1.1 billion was spent on the 2018 World Cup operational costs. $636 million was spent on various FIFA football tournaments, such as the Club World Cup, the Youth Tournament, the Women's World Cup, the Under-20 World Cup. $448 million was spent on additional World Cup expenses, including the prize money of $400 million and 1.5 million was paid to each participant to prepare for the event. 315 million dollars was in football club related expenses such as the FIFA club benefits program of 209 million. This is the amount that FIFA compensates various football clubs such as Barcelona, Real Madrid, Manchester United, etc. for releasing their players for the World Cup. FIFA paid each club around $8,000 per day per player for the time that that player spent at the World Cup. In addition to this, FIFA entered into its club protection program insurance policy. That cost them $106 million. That is an insurance policy against risk of injury to players while they play in FIFA tournaments and who then cannot play for their clubs. FIFA spent $1.7 billion on football development and education. Out of that, $1.1 billion was paid directly to the members, confederations and regions to develop football in their own territories. $100 million was spent on the schools program for grassroots football development. Then there were amounts spent on technical improvements, refereeing assistance programs, the FIFA World Museum, women's football programs, etc. FIFA also spends money on human rights programs and anti discrimination programs. $211 million was spent on marketing and sales and FIFA spent $797 million on administration, including staffing costs, communications, office costs, travel and meetings, etc. FIFA also spent $124 million on governance related issues, including expenses of judicial bodies and commissions, player status committee, expenses related to the court of arbitration, expenses related to the rules, regulations and monitoring of international player transfers and anti-corruption measures. FIFA therefore spends approximately $3.7 million per day on its various activities. And when one looks at the expenses of uh, 5.4 billion from another direction, you can see that 1.8 billion was spent on the Football World Cup. 2.7 billion was spent on football related activities and 797 million on administration. The football related activities include the amount spent on the various FIFA tournaments and the development and education program of 1.7 billion dollars. So in effect, FIFA spent roughly 85% of its expenses on football related activities and 15% on its administration. And during this four year period, FIFA distributed 
$1.2 billion to its members and various confederations. This money is meant to be spent on the development and growth of football in your countries and in your regions. So members received directly from FIFA $922 million. $213 million were paid by FIFA to the confederations and $26 million was given by FIFA to the regional associations, all to improve the quality, standards and growth of football in their own areas. And if we compare the amount that FIFA has budgeted in its next four year cycle for distribution to members and for the growth of football, you can see that the amount has increased from 1.1 billion to 1.7 billion, which is a 50% increase, an absolutely huge increase on the amount that FIFA expects its members to spend on football based on the amounts that FIFA will pay them. So the members' contributions have increased by 51%. The amounts paid to the confederations has gone up by 35% and the amounts to the regional association has gone up by 138%. This is a great initiative by FIFA to make sure that its confederations, regions and members are well funded so that they can improve the quality standards and reach of football within their own countries and their own regions. And to give you an example of the sort of funding that FIFA gives its members, for example, the Afghanistan Football Association receives 4.4 million, Angola 4.4 million, Barbados 4.3 million, the USA 3.8 million, Brazil 3.8 million, and England 3.8 million. FIFA obviously gives more to those countries which need to set up a proper structure and need to invest much more money than those countries such as Brazil and the USA and England where football is very well established and they obviously don't need as much money to develop football in their country as does a country like Afghanistan and Angola. Let's have a quick look at FIFA's balance sheet at the end of 2018. At the end of 2018, FIFA had reserves of $2.8 billion and it had cash or cash equivalents on its balance sheet of $2.8 billion. If you compare that to previous periods, you can see that FIFA's reserves went up from $1.3 billion in 2010 to $1.5 billion in 2014 and to $2.7 billion in 2018. It's an increase of 114% over the 2010 level. It's a very, very strong balance sheet that FIFA has. And we mentioned that FIFA has expenses of roughly $3.7 million a day. Assuming that as of today, FIFA makes absolutely no revenues, FIFA has enough cash and reserves to operate at that current level of expenditure for two years. This is very important. And this is in fact the backup that FIFA has in case something goes wrong on the revenue side. It's in a very strong position. And finally, just a little snippet. I had mentioned earlier that the prize money for the Football World Cup was uh, 400 million. So how was that actually uh, uh, made up and distributed? Well, that 400 million uh, out of that uh, 38 million went to the champions, France. The runners up Croatia received $28 million. Belgium in third place, 24 million. And England in fourth place received 22 million. Those teams ranked from number five to number eight received $16 million each. Those teams that finished between ninth and 16th place received $12 million each and the rest received $8 million each. That's, I think, a fairly generous uh, amount of prize money and participation fee that FIFA pays. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you all again soon. All the best. Bye-bye.